Glory, hallelujah. Greetings and God bless you. I'm the Bishop, Gary Shearer, your servant for today. Amen. Along with my wife, my beautiful wife, Apostle Sharon Shearer, we greet you from Transformation Life Ministries, where our mission is to transform the world, multitudes of souls at a time, by the renewing of the mind, through the preached gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I hope that when this word finds you, it finds you in good health, it finds you in peace, and it finds you in love. Amen. So uh, the wife and I took a short getaway the week before Christmas, and we went to Las Vegas, and we had a great time. Um, we love Las Vegas. It's just beautiful there. Um, now, we don't, just for the record, we don't do any gambling. We don't tempt ourselves. We don't even put $1 in the slot machines. We're like many other people. Uh, one is too many and a thousand is never enough. So we don't even do that one. But anyway, while we were there, we had already planned in advance that this time we was going to take a road trip up to the Grand Canyon. So um, we got up early in the morning as planned, about 6 a.m., and we hit the road. Um, our first stop was the Hoover Dam. It wasn't um, it wasn't that far at all from um, Vegas. The Hoover Dam was amazing. The first thing we did was walk on the bridge to where you could walk across across the bridge or almost across, and then you'd be standing right dead smack center over the Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam was amazing. And then just standing on that bridge was, was breathtaking. And then we got back in the car and we drove on down to the dam. Um, the dam is, was awesome. One thing about the dam that we really, that, that, that was a trip was um, you could be standing on the top of the dam and on the right hand side of you be uh Nevada and then on the left side be Arizona. As a matter of fact, the the women's bathroom was I think in Arizona and the men's bathroom was in Nevada. The state line runs right through that dam. Um that dam, they said that the concrete that they poured in that dam would have stretched from California all the way to New York. That's how much concrete it took to build that dam. And I mean, words can't describe it. Pictures can't describe it. That's something you got to go see for yourself. Um, upon building the dam, when they built that, I forget the year, but anyway, early 1900s. But uh, when they built the dam, uh, I think they said 130, around 130 people died in the building of the dam. Um some from heat stroke, heart attacks, stuff like that. Not everybody fell. They might have one or two people that did fall, but most of them died from the heat and just the conditions of trying to build that. Um, so from the dam, we went on, and, and like I say, for man to build something like that is truly amazing. You have to see it for yourself. So from there, we got back in the car and, and continued to drive on out to the uh, Grand Canyon. Now, the part of the Grand Canyon that was accessible to us from Vegas was what they call the South Rim. Um, now, when we got to the Grand Canyon and started driving the South Rim, we went down this road called Desert Road, and it took us around the edge of the south rim of the canyon and we you could several spots you could pull up and walk up to the canyon and you could literally stand on the edge if you wanted to but let me tell you something it was breathtaking and getting standing on the edge the one time i did about a couple of feet from the edge it just took my breath away and me and the wife was you know just truly amazed but what I want to say is, man, man, we 
We saw the Hoover Dam first. Man, man created the Hoover Dam. Man built the Hoover Dam, and it was like amazing. But God, God's hand formed the Grand Canyon, and the Hoover Dam can't touch the Grand Canyon. As a matter of fact, standing at the Grand Canyon on the south rim, they said to get to the other side, it'd take another five hours. I forget exactly how big the Grand Canyon is, but it is a sight to see. The most amazing part, though, is that God created that. Man still can't figure out how God did that. They they assumed that from the water and running through the Grand Canyon, it formed it. But man, it is massive and it is unbelievable. Something that's like a must see if you're putting things on your bucket list. So I got to thinking about how awesome, how amazing God is. And then I realized, well, yeah, people actually were there, was there. Can you imagine if you would have been there when God parted the Red Sea so the Israelites could cross and said they crossed on dry ground when they were trying to escape? Um, Pharaoh and his soldiers. Can you imagine that? Being able to see that? Sometimes we see some of God's miracles and we don't even realize where we're standing at, what we're witnessing. Um, God also, when he brought the people out of Egypt, when they got thirsty one time, he made water spring forth out of the rock so that they can drink. He brought manna from heaven, he fed a manna, bread from heaven. He didn't allow their they shoes to wear, their sandals to wear out for 40 years. Unbelievable. He guided the people by cloud by day. All they had to do was follow the cloud. And then at night, he put a pillar of fire in the sky and they followed the fire. God is amazing. Um there's one scripture that I want to give for today. I just wanted to get on here and tell you how amazing God is. In Genesis chapter 1, the very first verse, and this is a trip when you think about it, it says, in the beginning, God. That's what it says. In the beginning, God. You can really stop right there. In the beginning, God. Don't you know that and let me read it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God, God saw that the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Now, Let's talk about darkness. And, and it goes on to talk about how he placed the stars and all this. So a lot of people try to put God into this, their own imagination. We really can only see God from what he's given us in his word. Even when you look up in the air at night, the little you can see with your eyes is nothing compared to what's really out there. Don't you know that there are the stars that man can see with their telescopes, only the stars that man can see, the ones that they can see, there's more stars than it is grains of sand in the whole world. We're talking about how big our God is. There is one star that they, the furthest star out that, that, that man can see with a telescope is 56 billion light years away. 56 billion light years. And you know, a light year is like millions of years in that light, in that second. But the furthest star they can see is 56 billion light years away. There's more stars in the sky in our universe that we can see than it is leaves on every tree in the whole world. Amazing, right? So I just want you to know that in the beginning, God, when you wake up in the morning, God, 
Whenever you get ready to do something, God. Whenever you need something, God. When you want to celebrate, God. When you're having problems, God. Whatever you're going through, God. And we do that through the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come to God. Hence, John through John chapter 1. Hold on. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Jesus was with God when God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Jesus is the name that God has given us to worship him in. Jesus is who God has given us our salvation in. We are covered in the blood of Jesus. So we thank God on today for everything that he has done. If God can do those things like that, um, as big as the universe is, as big as the world is, big, but God is mine for you. Don't you know Jesus would have went to the cross if it would have only just been you by yourself? God loves you that much that Jesus would have went to the cross and died for just your sins alone. This is a personal relationship with God. God loves you. He wants you to know how much he loves you. He wants to show you his love. He doesn't wish that nobody perish. He wishes that everybody would come to Christ. So just know there's a difference to just being saved and being delivered. If you on here today and you saved, let's not just be saved. Let's be delivered. Let's move into his glory. Let's move into his abundance. Let's move into to, to, to his blessings. Amen. Let's get to know our daddy. He's much better much bigger than we could ever imagine. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Enjoy your New Year's. Amen. And see you in the 2023.